Welcome to the third in the series of tutorial videos which I'm doing on the Bruder conversions. In this one I'm going to be focusing on the Bruder John Deere tractor. It's the 5115M is what it says there on the on the bonnet. Before I get started I think that I'll probably point out that I didn't actually intend buying this. I actually wanted the trailer from it to convert into the boat trailer which was another video which I did. The other two models which I've done just very briefly I did the two-wheel drive Land Rover Defender and a couple of days ago I did the four-wheel drive Jeep. I don't expect this to be amazingly difficult but actually I think it's quite a good starter model for conversion and I like the idea of the challenge of trying to do one which was so small and the challenge for this is going to be to make it such that the driver is still able to go in and from the outside that the model looks as little changed as possible whilst hopefully being quite effective. I'm going to be splitting this video up probably into three parts where I think that the first part is going to look at the dismantling which um, with these models so far has been the hardest part. The second part of this video series will be putting the transmission in to drive the rear wheels and finding a way of attaching the axles to the rear wheels and then in the final part I expect that I'll be putting the electronics in and finishing the model. On with the dismantling. Now the front part here comes off first and is the easiest part to, to take off and I've already had this apart but I'll just show you what I did. So with this with this with this bonnet you've got three tabs to in fact probably four tabs to to think about. The first one is in the front here and usefully what they've done with these tabs is they've actually got little holes in the back of the black part that you can slip something into. This kilt pin which I took from the house and unbent is just about the right kind of size for this particular job. If you push the pin in it actually allows you to move the little green tab from the chassis back and that loosens the bonnet. The next thing which I took out with the two side bits and again there's, there's actually somewhere for you to put something in and to pull it and the other side similarly you can actually you can actually get something in there and pull the tab back. Now, having loosened the bonnet, it still isn't going to come off because it's actually held in place by this exhaust stack. And to release that, because it just pulls out, you can actually lever it out carefully with a screwdriver, being careful not to scratch the body. That then allows us to take this bonnet section out. Now I'm going to have to think carefully about what tabs I want to keep because I'm going to want this to come on and off because I'm planning to put the battery inside there. The next thing that I want to remove is the actual main cab area itself. Now to do that you don't have the luxury of little holes you can probably see them here now. See the under holes here. You you don't actually have the luxury of those to push a pin into to get the thing to release. So what I did was I made my own holes and I basically drilled out each of these one, two, three, four, five, six tabs to actually effectively get the same effect and I just used a power drill and a 2mm drill bit so each of these can now be separated and by degrees the cab moved out. What I did was I got hold of some nails and if you push A nail into each one. 
Right, so all of the tabs are now pushed back. With a gentle tug, or even not so gentle tug. It all comes off and you can see here where I've used the drill to, to make those gaps to get the pins in. Okay so so far so good we've still got two more tabs here in order to get this piece off and I'll just push those nails in a little bit more there was one more which I forgot to mention, which is, which is the exhaust step. And the exhaust is out. There we go. And so, so we have this piece off as well. Not the most elegant task, but needs to be done in order to move forward. So the next thing which I need to do is to remove these wheels from the axles. I'm very keen that I don't do any damage to the wheels and I don't need these axles. So I'm just gonna saw that with the Dremel. Obviously always remember, especially when you're cutting metal with the Dremel to use safety glasses. Right, so we have rear chassis and we have the two halves of the rear axle with the wheels still attached. Now my experience of getting axles out of these has not been great. So I've actually thought about the next stage in with this stage. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to pull this out. I don't really want a chance putting these wheels into hot water. I've got no idea what it would do to the shape of the tyres and I don't actually want this hole to be made any bigger. So this this nut, and there'll be two of them, I've already pre-drilled with a 2.5mm drill bit and I've tapped it out with an M3 thread and we'll come on to later why I've done that. So. The next thing to do is to just put this, and I think it's an M6 nut, to try and put it on as straight as I can. And I probably just need some pliers to help me. That looks reasonably straight. I don't think it's that critical, but straighter the better. And I'm doing it up until it's flush with the end of the yellow bit. I'm sure that there are other methods, but this one works for me and seems to inflict minimal damage on the shaft of the model. I think that having this nut particularly helps protect that. And what I really wanted to do was to try and make sure that I didn't split the end of this or make its diameter much bigger. I think that that's about it for this first stage of the video. I hope that you've been able to follow this so far and you found it interesting and useful. The next part of the video coming up will be looking at how we install the drive in the rear. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video.